person we spoke with the the secretary, I think, of the committee. There, there was arrangements made beforehand, uh, but we do not. There's no written letter. It was uh, it was agreed over the telephone, and I believe that we could trust the committee okay, enough to to accept a telephonic agreement. No. But, Mr. No. Chairperson, if there are no, no. concerns about the rules of Parliament, and not simply because it is AFRI forum, then we would be preferred, prepared to switch off the camera. Okay, all right. Um, can we? Can I request for that? That, that, that you, you do. I know that uh, in 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 the chamber, it's not allowed, uh, uh, and therefore, this being a replica of that, that uh, we we ask you not to, because it wasn't made to any of our. I mean, to our attention. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. All right. Um, you have 10 minutes, and uh, we're giving you an opportunity to do the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. My name is Adam Strutz. I am Deputy CEO of AFRI Forum. Fifteen years ago, the South African government accepted David Rakhase's offer to buy the farm that he was renting from them. To this very day, the South African government has been unable to transfer ownership to his name. Earlier this year, Akerland Boerderij was served with an injectment, injectment order by the Minister of Rural Development and Land Reform and told that they had seven days to vacant, vacate their farms at a compensation of 10% of market value. This, of course, to further Chinese interest in South Africa. This week, AFRI Forum had to obtain an urgent application in the High Court to compel the South African Police Service to act against land invaders on the land of a Gauteng farmer, Dr. Motori Maserumuli. The police simply refused to open Masiru Mulese's case. Mr. Chairperson, expropriation without compensation or below market value shows disrespect for property rights as a basic human right. I only have 10 minutes, so I will keep it short. In my presentation, I will refer to the ideological goals of the ANC-EFF alliance. I will touch on the historical fallacy that serves as motivation for expropriation without compensation. I will explain why willing buyer, willing seller has failed, why this policy would be catastrophic, and why the so-called hunger for land is a fabrication of the ANC-EFF alliance. The ANC and its alliance partners are rooted in Marxism-Leninism. According to its own strategy and tactics documents, the movement believes in a national democratic revolution, which implies that as much power, as must, uh, that as much power must be centralized in the state as is permissible by the balance of forces, so that the state mechanisms can be used to further the goals of the revolution, which is to move South Africa down the path of socialism, eventually to create a communist utopia. That is why disastrous policies like those of the Soviet Union, communist China, Cuba, Cambodia, Zimbabwe, and Venezuela are frequently venerated by the ANC alliance, while the policies that have created the world's wealthiest and most harmonious societies are depicted as racist, oppressive policies. That is why upcoming black farmers are complaining that they do not get support from government. This is why already 23% of people in South Africa live on state-owned land, and half of them are complaining about the quality of this land. This is why only 6% of all the land that has been acquired by the current government since has since been transferred from state ownership to private ownership. It is regularly argued, and especially in this house, that whites stole the land. This is the single biggest historical fallacy of our time. There are three ways in which white people acquired land, namely the settlement on empty land, the purchase of land through treaties, cooperation, and agreements, and most controversial but least significant by conquest. Then, of course, there was legislation such as the Native Land Act of 1913 and the Group Areas Act of 1950. These injustices must be dealt with, but they must be dealt with specifically and not used to construct grand false narratives or to advance new racist policies. If, however, it is your argument, as we have heard, that ownership of land by whites should be regarded as illegitimate because Africa is the black people's continent, then you should be prepared to join forces with white right-wing fascists in Europe who argue that Europe is white people's continent and that there is no place for black people in Europe. 
If you argue that Africa shouldn't, that white people in Africa shouldn't receive equal treatment, but that the rights of black people in Europe should be protected, then you are nothing other than a racist hypocrite. Government has already spent more than 50 billion rand on land reform and has very little to show for it. The Mutlanti Commission found that a major barrier to effective land reform is government inefficiency and corruption. About 5% of agricultural land is available in the market for purchase every year. If government had only spent that money on purchasing farms, it would have bought out half of the country's farms by now. But this approach would not comply with the ideals of the National Democratic Revolution, which is why the ANC-EFF alliance prefers a government bureaucracy through which it can exploit complicated processes to enrich itself at the expense of the people. The debate about land reform comes at a time when government could least afford to lose investor confidence. Investment, certain, investment certainty leads to capital accumulation, which leads to more employment and higher productivity. An assault on private property leads to investment uncertainty and economic decline. In 2015, for the first time on record, South Africans began investing more abroad than foreigners invest in South Africa a sure sign of loss of investor confidence. Claiming that property rights would be eroded and that economic freedom would be compromised in a way that would enhance economic de development is like claiming that KFC would be expanded in a way that, it would, that would ensure that chickens would prosper. Those who are calling for the erosion of property rights have not been able to provide any evidence on why a more aggressive implementation of an already failed policy would lead to anything other than a more aggressive failure. Mr. Chairperson, this, this is Albert Einstein's definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. Christopher Hitchens said that whatever is asserted without evidence should be dismissed without evidence. We are now being called to comment on expropriation without compensation, despite the glaring fact that no evidence has been provided as to why this would yield positive results in the first place. But, the gratification that the ANC-EFF alliance get from hurting the middle class and the wealthy outweighs the desire to uplift poor people. The problem, however, is that expropriation and the consequential economic collapse will hurt poor people more than wealthy people who will simply leave the country. In which case, you would not only have created a food shortage for all South Africans, but in which case you would also lose your tax base. All available, all available evidence indicates that the hunger for agricultural or rural land in South Africa is largely a myth. Of all the land claims to date, 59% were filed in urban areas. Of all the land grabs in recent years, 84% were in urban areas. South Africans, but black South Africans in particular, are urbanizing at a rapid pace. Of all the people who have taken the effort to file land claims, 93% have indicated that they would rather have money than land. A recent poll by the Institute of Race Relations found that only 1% of people in South Africa believe that more land reform would improve their lives and 0.6% regard land reform as South Africa's most serious unresolved problem. We should not let this issue be derailed into a racial issue. Unfortunately, the President has already done so when he used the words our people to refer to black people. The Deputy President did so when he threatened with a violent takeover if white people didn't voluntarily hand over their land to black people. Minister for Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Joely Mekize, did so when he said that no property of any black person or black group will be expropriated. It has become popular pastime for members of this House to blame every white person for the crimes of every other white person. Now imagine if we had blamed every black person for the crimes of every other black person. If we were consistent in how we evaluate and contextualize history, white people would make claims like black people are murderers only on the basis that some black people have committed the crime of murder, or that black people had to pay reparations for the Blokrans and Viennan massacres or the extermination of the Van Rensburg track. We would all agree that such claims would be regarded as grossly racist and intolerably unfair. And I'm convinced that those of you who call for reparations most aggressively do not even know about the Blokrans and the Viennan massacres or the Van Rensburg track. Why? Because you are drunk on ideology. It is an ideology not based on historic accuracy, 
but a desperate attempt to ferment racial hatred and division with the true aim of advancing state power and hopeless socialism under the banner of corrective measures. Yes, you are drunk on ideology, the ideology of the obviously failing national democratic revolution. You are drunk on power since every decision you make is an attempt to gather more power and control into your hands. You are drunk on hatred and contempt, not only for white people, but for the poorest South Africans who suffer under your policies daily and will suffer even more if you continue to destroy the economy and to sow hatred and division. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. <laughs> All right. Uh Honorable Maila, Honorable Kata, Honorable Telezi, Honorable Mampuru, Honorable Mukwili, and then Honorable Fultana. As he shake. Chair. Honorable Maila. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Yeah. No, no, I'll start, Mr. Stefan. You know, there is something that you mentioned, uh, Deputy CEO of Afrifora, when you were saying you, were, you indicated three ways in which whites acquired land. Then you said they acquired empty land. That's the biggest hogwash I've ever had. You see, you are a descendant of four draggers and other people like missionaries who would come to an area, find people, and say that they have discovered people. And therefore the land is theirs. And you call that land empty land. And that's nonsense. That's the biggest nonsense ever. Shall I respond, Mr. Chair, or are there more questions? No. Uh, let's take next one. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. Chair, I'm not going to stand here and try and incriminate any person that's doing a submission. I haven't ever done it, so yeah. My question is just one on what we are supposed to be doing, clarity. Um, Mr. Roots, what is the solution? Is there a solution? Next speaker, next no, no, member. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Chairperson. You will realize that most of the time I do not comment, and when I do so, I'm very specific. Yeah. But I just have one question to the gentleman over there. Before I ask the question, for his information, I'm a descendant of a, a man who was exiled, which is my grandfather. And as we speak, I've got uncles who don't have South African ID book, because they're not South African, they grew up in exile. And for the first time, I'm feeling the way I feel right now based on your presentation. You saying, white people got land because they came here and then they found vast land which was not occupied. And I don't want to ask you as to how many rooms you've got in your house. I believe you've got like eight bedroom house, you don't sleep in all of them, you only sleep in one bedroom. Does it mean the other seven rooms are not yours just because you don't sleep in them at the same place at the same time? But my question is, is this that we have written here based on research or it's out of a very deep anger that you seem to have against the African National Congress and the Equal Freedom Fighters? If you can ask me the question, then maybe I won't ask the rest, but I first want to understand your premise as to where do you base all this? Next member.
Mamburu. Okay. okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, Honorable uh, Maila and uh, Honorable Carter have, have, have raised what I wanted to raise in terms of the manner in which your forebearers acquired land. You speak about empty land. You speak about a negotiation with tribal leaders. You speak about conquest. What I want to understand, Hoshi Mamburu, who is my grandfather, has fought a very serious battle with regard to land. He was guillotined based on that. I don't know where he said is today. He fought for the whole of Transvaal. Then you say, in other words, he was fighting for something that belonged to you. Nonetheless, if you were in our boats, if you were in our boats, asking you the very same questions, we want our land back. We want to expropriate without compensation. What will be your answer? Thank you. Honor Mugwili. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. You know, Chief, let me tell you that uh, our people died. Maybe your grandfather and your great-grandfather and your father didn't tell you what they did to our fathers and our grandfathers and our grandmothers and our great-grandmothers. That is why you come here with that tendency of even undermining us, telling us that we are delinquent, we are mad. That is why you come here with your whiteness and undermine that your, descent, your grandfathers took our land and they murdered our people. That is why you come here and not acknowledge that the country is where it is because of your parents. That is why you are laughing because you are not where we are today. Let me tell you, my brother, you are not my brother anyway. No, he is. No, he's not. He's not. No, that's just. The fact of the matter, Chief, is that the land, junk of the land is in your hand as white. Secondly, the reason why we go to towns is because that's how your spatial development made us to be. It doesn't mean that the land that you are occupying, as blacks, we can't work it. The manner in which you, you introduced your new liberal and your apartheid system to us, make us to move to towns because we feel that where the towns are, that's where life is. Because you have taken everything that belongs to us, including the arable land that we used, our fathers used to work on it. You have, take our, you have taken our cattle. You have taken everything that belongs to us. That is why you are so arrogant to us, towards us. You, you, you think you, we are inhuman. We are not living beings. That is why you are acting in the manner in which you are acting. I'm in, in, in here because of your arrogance. And let me tell you, my brother, from another mother, we are going to take our land, whether you like it or not. The land that, that doesn't belong to you, we are going to take it. That, that belongs to us. We are going to take it. Yeah. In your submission, you did mention that... Uh, you are the only food producers. Yeah, it's here. It's in this, this thing that you have given us. It's in this thing that you have given us. It's you, you are the author of this thing. There is a sentence, there is a sentence in this thing that you have given us that says, should the land be expropriated, the only people that are going to be compromised are food producers. And those food producers are happens to be who? It means you are protecting your own pocket. 
with the expense of us as black people. Thank yeah, you very yeah. much. Th thank you, Hon uh, Honorable Fultana. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair. And thanks for the explicit presentation. The, uh, just to, starting off with the last point, method of uh, land acquisition that you mentioned, conquest. It is with pain to remind South Africans here and now that your grand, 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 grandparents held and conducted 10 bloody wars over a period of 100 years in the Eastern Cape. At the end of the day, 3 million hectares of land in the Eastern Cape is in white hands, and blacks only own 250,000. That's, the, that's, the, that, that's what you achieved. I will not talk about the rest of South Africa. So that conquest is a painful reminder of our past. Now you talk about the Einstein uh, you know, uh, theory, that doing the same thing over and over again, applying the same method, is not the wisest thing to approach when you're looking for change. Now, you are sending this country back to those kind of wars. Who in South Africa would think that Afroforum is a wise institution when you yourself are saying that doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different set of results is not the best thing? So that's where you want to send South Africa to. I don't know how many people in South Africa are interested in those wars, which you are advoca uh, advocating for. Thirdly, you seem to be very comfortable to put blame on the current operational failures of the current government. Now, this operation, this process is not about evaluating the, uh, the failure of, or success of the current government. Governments come and go, and it could be a totally different uh, you know, government in a couple of months' time, if not a couple of years. Lastly, Chair, I want to say thank this gentleman powered as he is by the minority Afro Forum for the attitude that he has displayed with those contents. You have heartened our attitude that maybe we don't even need a court answer. We don't even need a court case. The constitution has to be amended in a matter of months if we've got such people in the country. And then we can go back to war if need be. Yeah. That's basically where you have sent me from now onwards. I know there is a member of parliament who said, should this happen, there will be civil war. Okay, the constitution should be amended in a matter of months if we've got such people in this country. We're wasting time by talking. After all, there were no talks 400 years ago. People were simply mad at. When I grew up, the, my father didn't own any land on which to produce food for us to eat. The nearest food producing field was 10 kilometers away. And until he died, we had to walk in the morning to those fields, then chase nine o'clock at school. At half past four, at half past two, we go back there. By the end of the day, we're finished because my father had no milli fields on which to put. And you want that to be repeated. You have the guts to come to this legislature to tell us that you want that to be repeated. And my mother, who was a qualified teacher, had to drop out of school because of the policies of apathy, because the policy wouldn't allow her to teach whilst my father was also a teacher, and there was no field for her, for, for our family, to produce food. But here I am today as an MP. I will stand for them. Let's go for the amendment of the Constitution. This talk, Honorable Chair, is a waste of time with such characters in South Africa. The, uh, except that the process of, uh, the process of parliament of uh, soliciting and getting the, the public participating will continue. Yeah, yeah. We, I'll, I'll talk to you just one, I'm just one, one point. I'm coming to Honor uh, So, So the process of amendment will remain intact in terms of the constitution. So it's, uh, it's Filtana's uh, uh, remarks, but not the committee's uh, uh, position. Honorable uh, Shivambo, Honorable Mutapo, Right. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay. When this gentleman was from Afri Forum was trying to present whatever he wanted to present to this committee, 
he was drunk on hatred of hating black people. Yeah. The insanity he defined, I could see on him. The insanity he defined on the uh, alliance of so-called alliance of ANC and EFF, I could see on him. And don't come here and misrepresent facts. As we are talking now, even before, there has never been a, 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 a food security. There has been a lot of food shortage long before, especially for us, for, our, for, 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 for masses of our people. So now because parliament has taken a resolution, you come here and try to be smart, try to be as if you are sympathetic to our people and say that they will, if this happens, there will be shortage of food. That's sheer insanity, drunk on hatred. No, the Ram issue, oh, the issue of, I'm, I'm, I'm taking back the waste chair. Uh, the issue of, in law we say there is a rest you lose, no man's land. The thing belongs to no one, like the bears when they fly here, they don't belong to anyone. They are rest you lose. So you want to tell us that, in 1488 when Bartholomew Dias arrived here, it was no man's land. In 1652, when those guys, Jan van Riebeck, arrived here, it was no man's land. That's sheer insanity and drunk on, drunkenness on hatred. So what I would like to know from you, although I don't think it's necessary, as Honorable Mambur has alluded to, our royalty, our great-grandfathers and mothers, our kings and queens were robbed of their land. They were given mirrors. Now you tell us you negotiated. How can you negotiate with a person whom you don't even, because they didn't even understand these languages. How did you negotiate with them? So please, if you want this process, or your inputs to be, to, to, to be taken seriously. Don't be, come here with sheer arrogance. We have been listening to you, insulting us, asking on us, calling us names, but you want us to take you seriously. That's sheer insanity. Shwambo. No, thanks, uh, Chairperson. I, I honestly think we should not be agitated by racist African children who come here and try to have some chicken audacity to try to insult us and try to anger us. Because that is what they've been doing throughout the public hearings. They've been following us, uh, a group of racist kids from Pretoria who have been following us in the Northern Cape in KwaZulu-Natal, coming to make threats to us there. Because they had hoped that we're going to react there and then collapse the public hearing process. That's what I've been doing. They're, they're the ones who went to America to go and spread false propaganda that is white genocide in South Africa. And, 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 and trying to mobilize the international community against the democratic state. That is treasonous. We have got kids, racist kids, going around saying that there's genocide in South Africa, uh, there must be sanctions, there must be all sorts of limitations that are imposed on South Africa. While we are a democratic country, we'll have to live with these uh, realities that we have uh, amongst us uh, kids who have been uh, drained in racism. They've been taught racism. They, they suck racism from the breast of their mothers. That is why every time they think, every time they walk, everything else that they do, it's, it's, it's expression of uh, anti-black racism that they, 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 they are doing. Uh, the fact of the matter is that the white people in South Africa came as a form of colonial settlements. That is a fact. 
But the land that they are occupying is through colonial settlement. They are settlers here. They even refer to themselves as Europeans. They had boards all over South Africa saying, Europeans this side, blacks this side. It's not us who said that. Throughout their existence, they, they identify themselves as Europeans. And now when we want our land back, no, we're not Europeans, we're Africans. They do not want to hand back the land back to us. We are going to, co to amend the constitution in order to expropriate land without compensation. And we're not going to be threatened by kids. We're not going to be, we're not going to be threatened by, by children who think that the imperialist powers will intervene. There's, there's nothing that is going to happen about that. The only question that we're going to ask is, are you still threatening us with war like you have been sending those uh, African thuggish kids who came to threaten us in the public hearing? Are you still threatening war if we engage on a democratic process to change the constitution in order to expropriate land without compensation? If you are threatening us with war, we're ready. We're more than ready. Yeah, thank you, uh, thank you, Chairperson. Um, <clears throat> I was reluctant to uh, to make a contribution today because I'm part of the white minority in South Africa. But everyone was making a statement, and I was feeling it is important. For me, Afri Forum acted today as a white black land first organization. They definitely not representing the white minority in South Africa. And what you did today was a disgrace for your own organization. And I'm telling you, you will feel that in future. The way you acted the previous months, the way you acted trying to fight for something you believe in, you will destroy yourself. Whether you like it or not, that will happen because South Africans are fair people and they judge and when they judge, they ju judge harshly. But I do have a question. Every, every forum was present basically at 95% of all the public hearings we had across the land. At every forum where I was, every forum spoke. Was there not a report back from those people who spoke to head office to report to you that South Africa, the majority of South Africans who attended those hearings are hunger for land and that that is a problem that we all need to solve? And the, was there no report back to that? And if there was a report back, why don't you change your stance to be more progressive and trying to assist a problem we need to fix in this country? No, Chair, I, I also would like to add that I is teleergesteld met jylle submissie vandag. Ek is al 20 jaar in die parlement where we've been building a new South Africa. We've been building relations. And I've heard other AFRI forum meetings where, you're, where you have presented, there's not been this arrogance. We are trying to build a South Africa. You are taking us back. And it mark up a plate with Joe van Dach that your insults to the people here is unacceptable. We need to come together as a nation. Ekkes Afrikaans sprekende. Vandag 52 jaar gelede is Hendrik Verwoord doodgemaak in hierdie parlement. Jy weet het, ne? And we need to reach out to each other. You've heard people here that are hardening their hearts as a result of what you have said today. We've been sitting with this process for months to find a restorative justice solution. You have not commented on one clause of the Constitution. All you've done is you've attacked the ANC and the EFF. Why don't you comment on the provisions of the Constitution and be constructive so that we can take this process forward? 
It's exactly the same as Black Land First yesterday that attacked me as a white person. You've done the same to black people today. And so please, I would plead with you to reconsider your approach. We are called to be peacemakers. Blessed be the peacemakers. We are called, we have a ministry of reconciliation. And I'd urge you to consider your position. Thank you. Honorable Brennbach. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think that uh, every forum, I'm not going to uh, comment on what the other speakers have said or, or repeated. I think this is a missed opportunity for you. And, uh, and I cannot align myself with anything that you have said. Um, Mr. Roots, the, the, you were, your, your, well, with all dissent and, uh, and respect, your, your presentation was, uh, was not part of the subject matter. And uh, therefore, I couldn't stop you. You had the opportunity and I, I allowed members to speak even if uh, it wasn't, uh, they, they were not supposed to because the, the, the session was for clarity seeking and all that. So I think I would like to close the session here and thank you. Okay, uh, what, members will not have another chance to, rep to reply, okay. I don't want to be insulted again, close them out. Yeah. Che, allow allow yeah. him. No, members. Allow him to hang himself. Me members. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Mi uh, 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 uh. No, no, no. Mr. Roots? Okay. On Honorable Chelese. Oh, Honorable Chelese? Chair, hmm. I understand my colleagues and agree with them when they say he mustn't continue. But for one reason, I, and I hope honorable members would agree with me, South Africa and black people in South Africa including the whites, they should know that we've got such in our midst and he must actually come out very clear for the whole South Africa to know what problems we're having. Because he is saying black people don't need land for agriculture, that's what he says. He's saying black people don't need more land than what they've got. He, Afri Forum is calling black people the so-called blacks, that's what South Africa must hear. Give him a chance as much as it's an embarrassment. Let him continue to do so for record purposes and for people to know the true colors of Afri Forum. All, all, all right, Mr. Roots, right to reply. Uh, uh, you have uh, three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Firstly, um, I did not come here thinking that I would convince certain members of this parliament, but I, th I believe that what we can do with our presentation is to try to expose what the ANC and the EFF are doing. Point of order, sir. I think. No, Point no. of order, Members. sir. Uh, uh, Point of order, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairperson, I'd like to respond Make sure to that questions. Trump is listening. Uh, uh, Make sure Trump is listening. Uh, 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 members, you see now, you see now. He, I it is his right now. You have made your statements. I didn't stop you. He must now make his statement, and we have still have, we still have presenters to make the point, to make their presentation. No. Um, continue, Mr. Roots. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Mr. Chairperson, there's a very big, important difference between the term straw man and steel man. A straw man is when you try to attribute things to someone that that person has never said or that that person doesn't believe. When you, tr when you make a steel man argument is when you try to portray what your opponent is saying as accurately as possible so that you can respond to the actual position of that person. What, what we've heard in the last 20 minutes are repeated straw man arguments, things that are being said that apparently every forum is saying that every forum is not saying. There was a list, I, it's not possible for me to respond to every single straw man argument or every single false accusation about what every forum is allegedly claiming. But I will try to respond to some of things, to some of these things. We can talk. Some of the, there were, and I've, I've noted this in my presentation, that there were serious injustices in South Africa's history that we need to take cognizance of and we need to deal with them. So I don't have a lot of time. I'll, I'll respond first to the historic point and then I'll respond to the solution because I think that's 
what we believe the solution is. I think that's the most important point. Uh, there were serious injustices and they need to be dealt with. But we need to deal with them on a factual basis. I can also tell stories of how my great-grandfather, Sarl Arnoldus Roots, wasn't able to fight against colonialism because he was three years old when he was thrown in a concentration camp. He escaped a concentration camp when he was three years old. But I do not believe that the emotion that I have regarding the fact that a little toddler boy, who if he had died in that concentration camp, I would not have been born, my emotions regarding that should not determine what my argument should be. The facts should determine what my argument should be. If we talk about, firstly, AfriForum did not say that the entire South Africa was empty land. We didn't say that. We said there were three ways in which land was acquired. If you disavow the notion that there was any empty land in South Africa, then you need to disavow a list of things. You need to disavow the fact that in 1884, the commission track went into South Africa and came back and reported that there was a lot of land where they couldn't find any people. You need to disavow the fact that in the diaries of Fuhr tracker leaders and missionaries and many others, they wrote about how there were certain areas that were inhabited and there were groups lived in certain areas and how there were certain areas that were not inhabited. You need to explain what the consequences was of the great Kosa suicide of Nongkahuse, for example. You need to explain what the consequences of the Mifekane was, where one to two million people died as a result of expansionist wars. And if you, were, if, and if you want to surpass all of those, you still need to surpass the geological and biological fact that it isn't possible to survive on more than 30% of South Africa's surface if you do not have the technology to dig a borehole. That is a geological fact. Do you cannot solution, claim... Do the solutions, uh, your time is lapsed, right? Just do your solutions. Thank you. I would have liked to respond to the others, but let me go to the solutions, and I'll deal with them quickly. There are eight things that we believe should be done, and I will go through them quickly. In terms of what this... Uh, um, to the message of the ANC, I did not interrupt you when you were speaking. Um, yeah. so just, just there were eight uh, things. Uh, there yeah. are eight things that we believe should be done. They no, are, no. I'm not calling you a straw man. I'm saying you are Honor, committing straw man Honor arguments. Mutapo. There are eight things. Honorable Mutapo. Honorable Mutapo. Honorable Mr. Mutapo. Please. I Honorable think the Mutapo. intolerance that we are seeing here to arguments that Please. disagree with yours is exactly the type of intolerance yeah, just give the that solution, we are struggling answer the question with. On solutions, Firstly, uh, the first Mr. thing Roots. that needs to be done is there should be a proper protection of property rights in South Africa. We cannot have economic growth or economic prosperity without the protection of property rights. Secondly, People should have the opportunity to work for themselves, to work themselves out of poverty and not be given freebies out of poverty because that isn't sustainable. Thirdly, restitution must happen. It is not our view that there should not be restitution. There has to be restitution. But it must be historically accurate and it must be, it must be based on evidence. Next. We need to fix the education system, particularly for black schools in South Africa, because all the available e evidence indicates to us that black schools are the most dysfunctional schools in South Africa, which has a major consequence on prospects of economic prosperity. The next point, economic and labor policy that is not founded on the pursuit of actual economic freedom. Economic freedom is the freedom to produce, not the, free the freedom to receive stuff for free. Economic and labor policy that is founded on actual economic freedom must be fostered. Next, we must close unnecessary government departments that only serve to waste taxpayers' money. Right. We need to seriously cut down on the Department of Land Reform, which will, which will leave less room for corruption and theft of money by ANC cadres, so that the money can be used for what it needs to be used, which is restitution, which needs to happen. The next point is that title deeds must be given to millions of poor South Africans who live on state-owned land and who are complaining about the quality of that land. And lastly, Mr. Chairperson, we need to free our minds from this notion of equality of outcome and of cultural relativism. The idea that if a particular occupation doesn't comply with the racial breakdown of, a nas of national demographics, then there could only have been some form of oppression. We need to stop prescribing to people how they should think. We need to stop being angry about the fact that 93% of people who file land, cla land claims say that they would rather want money than land. We need to stop being angry about the fact that black people are urbanizing at a higher rate than any other race group. Yeah. We need to stop being angry about the fact yeah. that certain people tend to want to be farmers and certain people tend not to want to be farmers. Once we deal with these issues, Mr. Chair, I'm concluding, 
then we will be able to move forward. I know yeah. the lady right. from the ANC is clutching her ears because she doesn't want to listen to a solution that is not in line with what her party is saying. Yeah. No, it's all right, Mr. Hor Mr. Thank Ritz. you, Mr. Chairperson. We want to thank you for, uh, for coming and making your oral presentation on, the, on, on this process. Thank you very much. Where is, where is the next presenter? Mr. Van Furen, are you here? Yes, Mr. Chair, we are here. All right. All right. <laughs> the, uh, the, eh? <laughs> we break a bit or what? All right, uh, please uh, circle members. Uh, Honorable Pumlana, you are taking the time for the next presenter. Our next presenter is Wetzenberg Pals. Yes. Mr. Uh, Mr. Gerrit van Furen. Yes. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Chair. Um, my name is Raymond Kupstad. I'm the chair.